I would think right, but the Lord gave me this declaration of faith that I began to say, and it just calmed my spirit. Amen. And this declaration of faith, it says, it says, I said, by the word of God, I will think right. I will talk right. I will walk right. And I will live right. And that stayed on my mind. And whenever something began to rough my feathers, I would speak this declaration. By the word of God, I will think right. I will talk right. I will walk right. I will live right. Come on, let's let that be our declaration this morning. Come on. If you got your word, glory to God. Just hold your word up in there if you got your word with you. Glory to God. Come on, let's declare it together. Say, by the word of God, I will think right. I will talk right. I will walk right. I will live right. One more time. Come on now. By the word of God, I will think right. I will talk right. I will walk right. I will live right. Now give God some praise right there. Whenever something begins to knock you off course, declare this by faith. And I can guarantee you, I tell you, it'll begin to come, your spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for your word today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to your people, Lord God. We thank you that you will encourage them, you will build them up, Lord God, you will strengthen them, you will deliver them, Lord God, by your word. So we thank you for it going forth today with clarity, with boldness, and with power. We thank you that captives shall be set free, and Lord God, our faith shall be strengthened. In the name of Jesus, let everyone say amen. amen. Can you give God some praise for his word now? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Last week, I started a teaching that is entitled, Being Fully Persuaded. Being Fully Persuaded. Now, as Christians, we must be able to discern the season that we're in. We can look around and see all of the things that are happening among us. And so we have to discern that we are in a time and in a season where we cannot remain lukewarm. This is not the time to be halfway in and halfway out. This is the time and the season that we're dealing with now. With all of the things that are happening in our world, we need to be all the way in. Amen? Amen. We don't need to be part of the five foolish virgins who waited too late to try to get in, and the door was closed. We need to be all the way in. Amen? Amen? We need to have our oil, our lamps, glory to God, and everything set and ready to go. Amen? How I many know that word of God says, just be ready? Amen. And so I want to encourage you in this teaching on being fully persuaded. No more riding the fence. No more one foot in, one foot out. How many know that when you're straddling the fence anyway, that you might as well be out? <laughs> Why? Because this word says that here, whether you be what? Hot or cold, because if you lukewarm, he says, I will what? Spew you out of my mouth. So it's time, church, for us to be all the way in. It's time for us to be fully persuaded. The scripture speaks of four categories of persuasion. The first category 
deals with there are some people who will never be fully persuaded. Luke 16, where the rich man died and asked Abraham, can you let Lazarus go back and tell my brothers about this place of torment? Talking about Hades. Talking about hell. And Abraham said to him, let them hear the prophets. Because even if someone rises from the dead to go back to tell them about the truth, he says, they will not hear them. So there are some who will never be persuaded. Then there are some who will almost be persuaded. Acts 26, when the apostle Paul stood before King Agrippa, and he was speaking the truth, the word of God to him. And King Agrippa said, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. See, there are some who will be almost persuaded. Then there's another group, the third group, the Bible speaks of, and that group is there are some who will be adversely persuaded. In other words, there are some who are going to be, a, be persuaded against the word of God. Who's going to turn from the word? They'll be persuaded to turn from the word. This is what the chief priests and the scribes did in Matthew 27 when Pilate came before the people and he says, Who do you want me to let go today? Barabbas or Jesus? And it says that the chief priests and the scribes persuaded the multitudes to cry out for Barabbas. They were adversely persuaded or wrongly persuaded. Look at your neighbor and say, we don't want neither one of those groups. <laughs> and then there's this fourth group that we all should have a heart and desire to be a part of. And that is to be fully persuaded in the word of God fully persuaded in truth amen? amen we find this in Romans chapter 4 let's go there and pick up Romans chapter 4 <clears throat> and we're going to begin with verse 16 We have those references, those scripture references on the overhead for you. If you do not have your Bible with you, we have the reference here on the overhead. Beginning with verse 16. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise may be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced, somebody say fully convinced, fully convinced. that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him 
for righteousness. Now here we find an example of full persuasion. Being fully persuaded in the word of God. Not having any doubt. Not having unbelief. But being fully persuaded in the word of God. And so we find in this principles that will help us to be fully persuaded in the word of God. Amen? Amen. All the way in. See, there are some things we really believe about the word of God. And then our lifestyle and our actions show that there are some things that we do not fully believe about the word of God. But God wants us to come all the way in. Because when we do, we, begin, we will begin to uh, 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 reap the full benefits of God's word. Amen? Amen? Now let's look at some principles here that will help us to become fully persuaded in the word of God. And in, in verse 16, we brought it out last week. It says, therefore, it is of faith. It is of what? Faith. It is of what now? Faith. faith. It is of faith. It says that it is of faith that it might be according to grace so that the promise might be sure. So that the promise might be sure. He starts off by saying it is of faith. So to be fully persuaded, it starts at this place of having faith and trust in God and in God's word. We have to be strengthened in our faith. We have to trust God completely. I mean, trust him completely. And we brought out Numbers 23 and 19 which tells us that we really can trust God because God is not man that he should lie. Whatsoever he says, come on now, I even know that he's well able to bring it to pass. Amen. Amen. We can trust God completely. I say completely. Amen. And... <clears throat> Trust is not something that is just given. Trust is something that is earned and established. Trust is earned and trust is something that is established. I mean, if you had, you know, uh, a, a few hundred dollars in your purse or in your wallet, uh, you just wouldn't walk up to anybody and say, hold this for me. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> but with someone that you have established trust and they have earned trust, you will say to that person, can you hold this for me? I'll be back in a minute. Why? Because the trust factor is there. And what I'm saying to you is that if we're going to be fully persuaded in God's word, we're going to have to come to a place where we totally trust God. That whatever we have, we can feel safe with it in his hand. No matter what it is, you can trust God with it. How many know that it's better in God's hand than it is in your hand? <laughs> In your hand is only two fish and five loaves. <laughs> but when you get it into his hand, it becomes more than enough. And now he can feed 4,000 with what you would have had for a snack. So we have to learn how to trust him. That is the first foundational principle when it comes to being fully persuaded is that you trust him. Amen. The people you trust, 
you have confidence in their word. Amen. The ones that you do not trust, how many know that you don't have too much confidence in what they in their word? See? So trust is earned and it is established. How many of you know that God should have all of our trust? Amen. How many know that he's deserving of it? How many know that he's trustworthy? Yes. Amen? Amen? He has established a track record with you. Yes. Somebody in here or somebody in the overflow, you know right now you shouldn't have made it to where you are today. You know right now you shouldn't be in the position that you're in. You know right now if it had not been for God by your side and taking care of you and watching over you, how many of you know that the devil would have been took you out? How many of you know that glory to God that you, they supposed to already have had your memorial service, but if it had not been for the Lord by your side? See, God has established a record with you. God has brought you through some trials. God has brought you through some troubles. God has delivered you from some things. Have you ever prayed the prayer, oh God, if you get me out of this one? Have you ever been there before? If you just get me out of this one. And here you are today, God brought you out of that one. So God has established a record with you that he can be trusted. Yet and still, yet and still, we don't fully trust God. We trust ourselves and our own resources more than we trust God when he owns everything. So now your neighbor say, trust him, trust him, trust him. It is a faith. It is a faith. We have to learn how to trust him. Because we'll never be fully persuaded in God's word until we are a people that have faith towards God and trust him completely. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go to the, to the next one here. That was principle number one. And we pick up in verse 17. He says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Now, we're going to focus on what he says here at the, in the latter part of this verse. Where he says, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Being fully persuaded is going to require you to call some things that doesn't exist in the natural now before it exists. It's going to require that you speak some things into existence. Now, some years ago, someone, you know, uh, somewhat challenged me in verse, with verse 17. And it was not like a, you know, a, a big, it wasn't an argument. But they say, well, Pastor... Look here, it says that God is the one who calls those things that be not as though they were. I say yes, and I am to emanate him, imitate, uh, uh, imitate him. <laughs> I say yes, glory to God, and I'm made in his likeness Amen. and after his image. And God encourages me to call some things that be not as though they were. And so we, I don't want anyone stuck on, on this part where you, where you think you cannot call some things that be not as though they were. If you're going to be fully persuaded, 
you're going to have to call some things that be not as though they were. Amen? If you're going to believe God's word completely, you're going to have to call some things that be not as though they were. Where well, there's confusion in your house or confusion in your life, you need to call peace. Be still. Now, there's confusion right now, but I'm going to call forth for peace. While the confusion is going on, I'm calling for peace right now, and I'm going to know that peace will show up. Yeah. Calling things that be not as though they were. And so when we talk about being fully persuaded, we're going to have to speak some things until they come to pass. Speak some things until they come to pass. When our pockets are running short. We're not even talking about the bank account. <laughs> you know, in, in a lot of situations, you know, we go with what we got in our pocket. Because if we go to talking about the bank, you know, glory to God, we owe them. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to raise your hand, glory to God. I'm, I'm just talking about some things I know <laughs> from experience. You go with what's in your pocket. You go with what you have in your wallet. You don't even talk about the bank, no bank account, you know. <laughs> you know, you, you got two or three notices already from them saying. But see, you have to learn how to call some things that be not Amen. as though they were. And you start speaking life over unfavorable situations. You start declaring where there's lack, you start declaring it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You start declaring, my debt shall be canceled. You start declaring, my bills shall be paid. You start declaring, my house is blessed. My family is blessed. Come on now, you start declaring, there's health in my body. You start declaring, I have a sound mind. You start declaring it. You start speaking it. Come on now. Before it comes to pass, you already start speaking it out of your mouth. You wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Today, Lord God, goodness and mercy shall follow me all day long. Thank you, Lord God, that I'm going to be blessed and I'm going to be a blessing. See, you speak it before it comes to pass. How I many you know that if you speak it enough, after a while, when you, if you hear it enough, it'll strengthen your faith? So the second key principle is that you have to have confessions of faith now that lines up with the Word of God. Because, see, the Word of God, that's, that, that, that's your support, and that's your power there. Amen? So you start having confessions of faith. And those confessions will strengthen your beliefs. Amen. And your beliefs is what persuades you Amen. to the full. Amen? Amen? What are you desiring? What do you want before the year ends? Just because the first nine months of this year has been very challenging for you doesn't mean that the last four has to be the same way. What are you declaring? Are you already declaring that this is the worst year I ever had? 
or will you go ahead and call some things that be not as though they were? Come on now. That I'm going to end strong this year. That everything is going to be well by the time December 31st come around. Come on now. God is going to bless me because I am his child. God is going to give me favor because I belong to him. What are you confessing? You got to be like the woman, glory to God, who was going to see the man of God after her son had died. And they asked the woman as she was on her way. He said, they, they asked her husband and said, is everything all right? And the woman said, all is well. Now her son was dead. But the woman said, all is well. And she went looking for the man of God. The man of God sent his assistant down and said, go see what the woman wants. And, and, and the man came and said, all, she said, all is well. And the man of God came to her. She, and the man of God said, now, you're here. What's going on here? She said, all is well. Her son had died. But she was speaking words of life. Because how many of you know that life and death is in the power of the... You can speak some things to help raise it up, or you can speak some things to go ahead and just bury it, put tombstone on it. What are you declaring? What are you confessing? We have to call some things that be not as though they were. We find it throughout Scripture. And see, we don't even realize that we practice that principle more than we think about it. You know, we look in a magazine, and we see some shoes we like. <laughs> Before you get them shoes, you done already declared it. Ooh, I like these. I'm, I'm going to get these. Uh, you spoke it before it came to pass. You go to the mall. You may not have no chips right then. May not have no snaps right then. Yeah. May not have no cheese right then. <laughs> But you see some you like. And what do you say? I'm going to come back. And... and so just like you speak it over those things, you can speak it when gloom and doom tries to enter into your life. You can declare it, even though it's not there right now. You can begin to declare it and say, I will have joy. My joy will be full. I'm not going to allow this situation to take my joy because this situation didn't give me my joy. My joy came from the Lord. Come on now. And I know that he can give me a joy. Come on now. That is unspeakable. Full persuasion or being fully persuaded means that I'm going to have to speak some things to help me be persuaded. I think about even our salvation. Our salvation, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, has two key elements, two key words that allows us to be saved. Confess and believe. Your confession strengthens your belief. And your belief is what brings the conviction. So to be fully persuaded... We have to start confessing some things that you don't even see yet in the natural. Yeah. And as you confess those things, believe them. Believe those things will come to pass. Yes, 
And I'm telling you, you'll begin to see the power of God's word. And when your word line up with that, you'll begin to see the power of your word. You know, this little cliche that we used to have when we were growing up, when somebody would say something bad about you, you know, we had a cliche. we say, sticks and stone may break my bone, but words never hurt me. You're lying right then. <laughs> but that was just our little cliche on dealing with, you know, de de dealing with how they try to come at you. But words are powerful. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, the scripture tells us. Words carry power. And so if words carry power, how much more power does the word of God carry? Come on now. God says that you can say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. And he says, and it will be done for you if you believe it and don't doubt it in your heart. Come on now, by a show of hands, how many of you have spoken some things before it happened and it happened? Come on now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Call some things that be not as though they were. Now, in saying that, I also want to say this. We are not to call things that are as though they are not. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that's a different story. We don't call things that are <laughs> as though they are not. We call things that are not as though they were. <clears throat> that's faith. That's confessions of faith. That's declarations of faith. But when you call things that are, as though they are not, then, then that's another story. <laughs> yeah, we, we got to deliver you from the lying spirit. <laughs> so Abraham practiced this principle, and Abraham reaped great benefits from practicing this principle. Let's look at it over in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22. God tells Abram and his wife Sarai that they are going to have a son. And his name shall be called Isaac. And they laughed when he first said it because they were up in age. They were old. And Sarai's womb had been closed or was barren. And Abram, you know, he had got beyond the age in the natural to, you know, have kids. But he has Isaac. And Isaac is called, is referred to as his only son. But God has also told him he's going to be the father of many nations. So how is it that he's going to be the father of many nations when he only have one son? And now God tells him, I want you to offer up your son as a sacrifice. Pick it up here in verse 2 of chapter 22. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering 
and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. <laughs> Nudge your neighbor say, Some folks got to stay with the donkey. <laughs> yeah, they can't go. You know, they got to stay with the donkey. <laughs> he told them two young men, Y'all stay here with the donkey. <laughs> and he says, When he says, The lad and I will go yonder and worship. But watch this now. And we will come back to you. How I many you know he was calling those things that be not as though they were? Because God says, I want you to take him to the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. But Abraham said to the men who were with him, y'all stay with the donkeys. Me and the lad. We'll go over here and worship at this mountain that God has told us to, to worship at. But we will be back. He was speaking it before it even came to pass. And we have to learn how to speak life over things that are unfavorable toward us. Stop agreeing with what the thing says. And start speaking life over it. Amen. Amen. Verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the blood offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Daddy. <laughs> He says, here I am, the father, Abraham said, here I am, my son. And Isaac said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? <laughs> We're supposed to be gone now. The, uh, his son Isaac understood that when he had the wood and the fire and they were going to the mountain, the son understood that an offering was about to be made. And so the son said, Dad, ain't nobody but me, you, the wood, and the, <laughs> and the fire. <laughs> so Isaac said, Dad, <laughs> where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Watch what Abraham says in his response. And Abraham said, verse 8, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. He spoke it. He says, my son, God is going to provide the sacrifice. Amen. Amen. How many situations have we been in when things look real bad and we begin to agree with how it looked in the natural and we begin to talk negative over it because we didn't see no other way when we should have been confessing and declaring that my God is well able to turn it around. My God will provide. My God will make a way. We don't see a way in the natural, but God is well able to turn it around. I shall live and not die. My children are blessed. Thank you, Lord God, that you're turning the situation around. Even when you don't see how, you speak life over it anyway. Faith pleases God. Amen? 
And I'm one that strongly believes that because of Abraham's declaration and confessions of faith, I strongly believe that while Isaac and Abraham was on this side of the mountain, God had a lamb on the other side of the mountain. Amen. I don't believe that the lamb was already there. I believe the lamb was there because of Abraham's faith and his declaration and God's in, in him saying, God will provide. And every time Abraham and Isaac took a step up the mountain, the lamb on the other side took a step up. <laughs> because God moves according to our faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. So he was speaking faith. He was living faith. He was walking by faith. Certainly wasn't walking by sight. Walking by faith. And every step he took up the mountain, that lamb on the other side was just coming right on up the mountain with him. That's why he didn't see the mountain when he first got up there. That's why he didn't see the lamb when he first got up there. You know when he saw the lamb? When he was getting ready to go all the way with God holy. He had lifted the knife and ready to make the sacrifice. And, 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 and the Lord said, lift up your eyes. And when he lifted up his eyes, then he saw the lamb that was caught in the thicket. That lamb was there because Abraham had faith in God that God was going to provide. And that's how God sovereignly moves on our behalf. When he knows that you have faith and trust and confidence in him. See, full persuasion will always speak. <laughs> let, me, let, 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 let me say that one more time. I, I, when you are fully persuaded, it will always be spoken. I can tell when someone is persuaded because they're going to say it. Yes. Yeah, I, no, 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 uh, uh, no. I strongly believe that. Yes. See, when you get full of persuasion, it overflows yes. from the abundance of the heart. The mouth will speak. That's why, you know, you, have, you, 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 you anybody watch boxing? You know, you know, you, you, you know, the boxers, you know, who are just fully persuaded, you know, they really been working out, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, when they, when they get in the ring, you know, when they, uh, when they have their little uh, media day, you know, they fully persuaded, yeah, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> fully persuaded. Glory to God. And. The ones who are fully persuaded, do knock them out. The ones who weren't fully persuaded, get. <laughs> but we see here that we have to speak. We have to call some things that be not as though they were. Before David with Goliath, David told King Saul, I'll fight him. And he says, <laughs> King said to David, boy, you ain't nothing but a youth. This man been fighting ever since his youth. <laughs> and David said, I have a track record. He said, I used to keep my father's sheep. And a bear and a lion came into the flock and tried to take one of them. He said, I struck them both and killed them. And he says, so shall this uncircumcised Philistine be like one of them. He spoke it. 
He called it out before it came to pass. Amen? Amen. What are you calling out Amen. that you want to see come to pass? Amen. 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 And as you speak it, I'm telling you, you'll begin to become persuaded. This is going to happen. This is coming to pass. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back over to Romans chapter 4. First, being fully persuaded requires what? Faith and trust toward God. Two, being fully persuaded requires that you call some things that be not as though they were. Confessions of faith. Confessions of faith. Faith declarations amen yes. no more I'm always broke amen. that declaration will keep you broke right. no your declaration is I God is going to bless me and I will have an abundance amen. I will have an abundance of resources. I will have an abundance of joy. I will have an abundance of peace. Come on now. I will have an abundance of, uh, uh, of a sound mind. You know, you just speak those things. No matter what it looks like now, you speak it until you see it come to pass. Amen? All right. This third key, we won't get all the way through, is verse 18. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. This third principle we find here is dealing with hope. To be fully persuaded, it requires that you remain hopeful. You have to remain hopeful. Hebrews 6 and 19 tells us this. It says that hope is an anchor of the soul. Where are we fully persuaded at? In the soul realm. And it says hope is an anchor of the soul. In other words, it is hope that holds us and keeps us until the thing which we're believing for come to pass. See, we become uh, uh, in the worst shape when we let go of hope. We should never become hopeless. See, another term for hope is expectancy. And so if you're going to be fully persuaded in the word of God or fully persuaded in anything as, as far as that goes, you have to remain in a place of expectancy. Again, no matter what it looks like in the natural, you still remain in the zone of expectancy. You know, it, it doesn't look good right now in the natural. But I'm still expecting God to move on my behalf. Yeah, things are not quite lined up like I desire them to be, but I'm still believing God for a mighty move. Expectancy. I have to stay in that place of expecting God to move on my behalf. Amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are not a people that will lose hope. But the word of God says in Romans 5, it says that we are to rejoice in hope. Amen? Amen. It goes on to say that hope never disappoints. 
Hope never disappoints. Why hope never disappoints? Because hope means expectancy. When I remain in the place of expectancy, then no, I'm not disappointed. Why? Because I'm expecting God to move. Amen. That's what keeps you working. Expectancy. That's what makes you get up every morning and go to work. Expectancy. Yeah. That means that when I get up and go to work, I'm expecting my check on payday. Come on now. How I many know that that's your motivator right there? That is what gets you up in the morning. Expectancy. When you let go of expectancy, when you let go of hope, then there's no way you can be fully persuaded. I have to have hope to be fully persuaded. I have to be in that area, or in that zone, or in that place of expectancy. Every day when you wake up, you should be expecting God to move in a mighty way in your life. You should be expecting God to use you in a mighty way in your life. Every day that God gives you, you should, it should be a day of expectations. Somebody say, of good things, of good things. See, some of us, we wake up with expectancy, but we wake up with expectancy for, for bad things. Flip it. It's time for us to be fully persuaded. We're in an area, we're in a, a, a time where we cannot just stay lukewarm or straddle the fence. It's not beneficial for you. Come all the way in. Let's be fully persuaded in what God has spoken in his word. I'm expecting great things for the last three months of this year. I'm expecting great things for my family. I'm expecting great things for this church family, for you. Great things. Above average, extraordinary things. I'm not talking about scripts and scraps. I'm talking about big breakthroughs. I want to hear somebody come up in here and give a testimony, glory to God. Yeah, Pastor, glory to God. I raised my hand and said, I'm going to be one of the millionaires. It has come to pass. Come on now. Expectancy. What are you expecting? Don't expect your life to be the same. Day in, day out, month in, month out. No, expect God to take you to another level of blessings and increase. I see it for you. Amen. Amen. Let's be fully persuaded. We're going to pick back up next Sunday with verse, what is that, verse 18? That's 19. Which verse is that when we're talking about hope? Verse 18. Verse 18, glory to God. Because we're going to be fully persuaded. Amen? Come on, stand to your feet.